Latin from scratch course, 10th class, future tense. Of course, in the uh, indicative mood, active voice. And I'm just saying future tense, but actually in Latin we have two futures. The future, like just normal future, and the perfect future. Now, what we are going to see is the normal future, also known as imperfect future, just because it is not perfect future, uh, just future. Now, it is funny because uh, this tense doesn't really appear in the kinds of texts that are usually uh, read, uh, translated, etc. Because, of course, what we usually read at first uh, is uh, history, which is in the past, it's not in the future, obviously. So, this, uh, this tense is not super frequent, and yet we are going to see that it's kind of funny because um, it's, uh, it's kind of special, let's say, okay? Morphology of the Latin future indicative, and we have two types of morphology, the future of the first and second conjugations, and the verb sum, and the future of the third mix and fourth conjugation. We are going to see that there are two completely types of uh, conjugations, so uh, even if it's only one tense, but we uh, really have to study two uh, forms to conjugate the future. And actually, even more funny is that none of these two forms of conjugating the future has survived in any Romance language, uh, Spanish, Italian, French, Romanian, whatever, okay? Uh, so it's uh, kind of funny. Okay, so let's start with the future of the first and second conjugations and the verb sum. In the first and second conjugations and the verb sum, the thing is rather simple, as long as we don't mix it with the imperfect, okay? Uh, we are going to see why. We use the present stem, so again, like, uh, if the fact that we are talking about the present stem doesn't mean that we are talking about the present uh, tense, okay? Two completely unrelated thing. Present stem is used for the future tense also. So the present stem is used, for now, for the present tense, for the imperfect tense, and for the future tense, okay? So present stem, then future morpheme B, just B. So that's why I was saying uh, don't mix this future with the imperfect, because remember that the imperfect has ba. So it, it also has a, a but uh, here we don't have the a. Okay, so future morpheme B, then variable uh, short E or short U when necessary. We are going to explain it right now and then the active endings, which we already know. So, when do we use E or U? E in the second and third persons singular and first and second plural, and U in the third person plural. All right. So, uh, here we have this table with these uh, conjugations. Let's see how uh, this works. So, uh, here we have, now again, a ma, we already know no, that this a is always long in the first conjugation. So, amabo, amabis, amabit. Now, here, uh, this is the penultimate. So, we don't really care if this is long or not. Now, this e is this e, which is short. So, amabimus, amabitis, and now here, amabo. So we see that actually the stress syllable is always the same. Okay? Then in monebo, we also know that this e is always long. So it would be monebo, monebis, monebit. Now, this e again is this e. So monebimus, monebitis, monebum. So again, the stress always in the same syllable. And now, uh, I'm just putting the verb sum here in this table because uh, it is definitely much more similar to these two than to the next type of future. But of course, it doesn't it doesn't have a b, okay? It doesn't have b. Uh, so here we see actually that we have the same root that we saw in the imperfect tense, and then we do have this. E, 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 U, no? so like here, and then uh, that's it. So, uh, ero, eris, erit, 
erimus here because this e is short this e is short so erimus eritis erum so once again the accent is always in the same syllable now we have to study the other type of future the future of the third mixed and fourth conjugations we are going to see that it doesn't have anything to do with the other type the first type that we have already learned okay the thing is a bit harder and it can look like the present subjunctive for now we don't know the present subjunctive so you don't really have to worry you will have to worry once we learn the present subjunctive okay but for now present stem this doesn't change now what does change is this future morpheme a like short a or long a and then the active endings uh, as usual so we use short a only in the first person singular and long a in all the other persons so for example here we have this no so we have ducam duques duket uh, for this asterisk, uh, you really don't have to worry, okay? This is for a super very future reference. So, ducam, duques, duket. Now, here, we have uh, this A is this A. So, it would be like this, no? So, it is duquemus, duquetis, duquet. So, here, we see that the accent doesn't always go in the uh, same syllable, okay? Now, here, we have capiam remember that this e is short because it's followed immediately by another vowel okay so this e is always going to be uh, short sometimes it will matter sometimes it won't no? so capiam capies capiet now here this e is long so capiemus capietis and here capient so we see that the pattern of the stress is the same and now here we have uh, pretty much the same actually like we have this e which is short just because it is immediately followed by another vowel no so we have audium uh, i uh, like the stress of course this is a diphthong no so the whole diphthong is stressed so audium audies audiet now we have this e which is long so audiemus audietis and audiem no? So again, we have a different pattern of stress. And of course, you see that these forms doesn't look uh, at all like the forms in the first uh, type of future. And yet, all of them are the same future. No? That's why it is so confusing. But that's how it is. We have to learn two types of future. One for the first and second conjugation of, and for the verb sum and then the other type for the third mixed and fourth conjugation. And of course, I, I haven't even written it here in the lesson because it's uh, quite obvious, but I, I'm saying now, no? okay, with, with my voice, with my mouth, with my tongue. Uh, in, in Latin, we only, I mean, we have actually two types of future, this future and then the future perfect, which in English also, uh, there is this difference, no? Like, I will do something and I will have done something. No? Future and future perfect. Now, in English, of course, we know that uh, we can also say, I am going to do something. So this, I am going to, uh, there is no equivalent in Latin. So how to know when to translate, I will do or I'm going to do. Uh, again, context and what feels right. You will actually see all the time that these two factors will decide what to do. Like all the time, all the time. Context and what feels right. Okay, so um, now what better way to practice context and what feels right than practicing with texts, analyzing, translating, etc.